Praise the Lord. Wow. Lord God, our heavenly Father, before you, O oh Lord, we come. There is a reason, there is a purpose. May you fulfill it, Lord, to the dot. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God who answers the prayer precisely. So, when you come to pray, never joke. When the children of Israel joked in the desert and said, were well, there are no enough graves in Egypt? Why have you brought us to die here? And the Lord said, because you have said so. <laughs> None of you, apart from those ones who did not see themselves as grasshoppers. Praise the Lord. Let me start by giving you a testimony. Many years ago, I think it was around 1993, 94, some people came and asked me that we go to Kawaragara. Believe me not, I didn't know where Kawaragara was. I was just, I think, in my second day on campus. And we went to Kabaragara to pray. We found this girl who was around 13, 14, but she had a problem with her spine. She had never bent to touch her knee because of the spine. Now we said, what do you want God to do for you? And she said, I want to bend. And I jokingly asked her, at what time? And she said, at eight. That was around seven. So we prayed, and then they served us our tea. We started taking our tea. Now for her, she was seated. And in front of her, there was a war clock. We had forgotten. At exactly eight, she stood up, and bent and touched her toes. So that is how precise God can be. So I come to present to you this God who answers prayer. I come to ask you, May you encounter that God. And when you encounter him, I want to assure you, you will never be the same. You will just never be the same. Now, before I get into what I've written, the Bible says that the righteous shall live by faith. Let me bring this more knowledge. And I have seen a man who is also having a PhD, you know, in terms of the hair. Okay? Completely not well distributed. Not so. Okay? Now I have seen him there. And I want to guess that he has children. If you, t that one, uh, that one still has a lot of, you know, he, that one can still manage a French cut. But if I ask you to cut French cut, how would your head look like? <laughs> it would look like mine. Now, suppose you tell your son, uh-huh, that pack your bags tomorrow, you go to school. And he says, Daddy, are you sure? You say, Yes. Pack your bags, tomorrow you are going to school. And he says, that where is the receipt which shows that you have paid? 
And he said, no, I have told you, pack your bags, tomorrow you're going to school. And he tells you, daddy, unless you show me the receipts, I will not pack anything. Now, how would you feel as a father? Now, that is how we have been dealing with God. He tells you are well. And you say, unless this pain goes away, I can't believe that I am what? And he says, when you ask for anything in my name, believe that you have got it and it shall be yours. And you say, unless I see it, for sure God, ah, uh -huh. So he says in Hebrews chapter 6, without faith, you will never, never please God. And he adds on to say, for, in other words, because. That's what the word for means. Because those who come to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who honestly seek him. So today, we want to please our God by telling him that tonight I will speak to this mountain and say, who are you before Berzabab? For today, you will be laid flat. I don't care whether by the time you open your eyes, the mountain is still standing. What I know is, I have prayed. Amen. For he says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, faith is being sure of that which you hope for. In other words, the basis of faith is hope. A person without hope is called hopeless. So I want to see people who are hopeless. Please raise up your hand, and then we shall bless you, and you go home. Not so. Hope is the basis. Let me tell you, one of us here, we have been asking God for a child. And every time the pregnancy drops in, a few months, a few weeks, you see drops of blood. And you say, God, again. And there's one which had dropped in, and drops of blood came. And you said, God, again. But when you went to check, they said, no, it is still there. And this Wednesday you said, I am going. And this must end. Amen. Do you want to show yourself or you want to keep it as a secret to yourself? Because you are seated somewhere. If you want to show yourself, it's okay. If you want to remain seated, it's okay. God has answered you. Amen. So, you had that hope. Because when you came, you were walking with desperation. You were walking as a desperate person. And you said, God, enough is enough. Now, that hope, keep it alive. Because Jesus Christ is our living hope. The hope that does not disappoint. Now, he says, faith is being sure. Being sure means I have no doubt. Now, there is an entity called being sure. There is another entity called hope. And faith is the linkage between these two. And today, we are going to join those dots. Faith is being sure 
of what I hope for. And he says, being certain of the things which are not seen. Being certain means I am quite sure even when I don't see them. And today, we are going to exercise that faith, the faith that moves God. Hallelujah. So, now let me go to the story which I wanted to tell you. You know, coffins have just started. Did you know? When somebody dies and they put you in a coffin, that is a new trend. But before, even the way the grave was made was different. They would dig the grave and then go inside and dig a trench inside the grave. Now, some of you who were not born in the, you know, 70s and before, you don't know. But they would dig something inside there. And that's where they were. They would put the body and put the sticks and they start powering the, the soil until the thing is covered. But these days, everything is modern. Now you are wondering, we have come to the church and now they are telling you how the grave is made. But let me tell you, some of the people who died in the 70s in Tanzania, they were wrapped in what we call the back cross, Echibugu. And after the war, they went and got those bodies. Opening them, they were as fresh as if they have just died. Uh huh. Now, are we moving? Okay. Now, how would the body be tied? They would tie you square, straight like this, then tie you from the head up to the what? Up to the toes to make sure that there is no single inch of you which is left. You will be as straight as a one, a ruler. You'd be as straight as that. They would tie you properly. And the chubugu would keep on sucking out every kind of fluid that comes out of you. And you'll be so dry. So, today we say, amabugo. In other words, you keep on contributing towards that chubugu. Now, that chubugu is not a dress for you to go to church. It is a dress for the grave. It is a dress for the dead. Now, is the story coming up? Okay, let us read. John chapter 11. We find the story of Lazarus and the sisters, and Lazarus is dead. And Jesus says, remove the stone. Let us go to verse 41. So they took the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Verse 44, the dead man came out. His hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Take off which cross? Take off which cross? If your face is tied, meaning also your nose are tied, not so. Your eyes are tied. Your mouth are, is what? Is tied. Because you don't need to breathe. So, as Lazarus 
comes out. The only breath that he was breathing, I think it is the breath which was internal. Because I don't think that Lazarus breathed in and held the breath inside. And Jesus says, how can this man forever be there with that breath which is internal? He needs to do what? To breathe. How can he be there without seeing where he's going? You must remove the cloth around his eyes so that he sees where he's going. How can he be there when the mouth is also tied? You must remove it so that he can speak. How can he be there walking like this? You must untie him so that he can also and swing his hands. Remove the grave cloth. That is the chubugo. Remove it. Was Lazarus dead or alive at the time when Jesus said remove it? But he needed to be set free. So tonight, the Lord is untying you. He has saved you. You are alive. But you are tied. You must be free. You must be free. So, Lazarus was no different from the people in Tanzania who were tied with the Chubugo. Not a suit of today. Today they put in a suit as if you are going for a wedding. You know? But they would tie you in the chubugo from the head up to the feet. I had to tell you the story because some of us have never seen it. But for me, I saw it. So I qualify to have a bald head. Don't you think so? <laughs> yes, I do. He was wrapped in the clothes of the dead. No breathing space. No freedom to move his hands. No freedom to move his legs because he was dead. Even if he was not dead. But because of the way he was tied, he would have also died. Suppose they tied him like that before he died. Do you think he would have survived? No, he would have died still. So, we are all dead. We were all dead in our transgressions. And hence we have been wrapped or we were once wrapped in the clothes of the grave. Listen, Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1. He says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. In which you used to live. When you followed the ways of this world and of the rulers of the kingdom of air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our, self, of, of, of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace we have been what? Saved. Debafumbra say, Yafuye ahagaze. You are a walking corpse. And we also say, this one is dead in sexual morality. That family is dead in alcohol. 
They are dead. Dead. Is there any single person that wants to keep a dead body in the house forever? No. However much you love the person, you don't want to keep the dead body around. That's why we say in our language, those ones who bury them in the shadow graves, they are the ones who keep, you know, who, who, who make them keep on smelling eh, at us. In other words, they will bury you enough not to, to bury you insufficiently and then you keep on disturbing them. No, they will bury you enough. The Baganda do it better. They will take you there in the bush. You know? The Banyankora and the Bachiga, they dig a grave somewhere in the banana plantation nearby. They will bury you there. Can you imagine? There. So, So, the world has a way it deals away with a person who is considered dead. If you want to know that the world can do away with you, just start bad manners, you will see. Your father and mother will try to tell you. Hmm? When you refuse, they will say, ah, not so. They have done away with you. Lazarus had to be done away with by her own, by his own what? Sisters. Through different things, we get a new dress code. And this is none other than the grave clothes. By what we do, that is the kind of dress that you will take up. By what you do, Some time back, we used to have a certain man who had one shirt, yellow, and it was, the material was nylon. And when you'd go for these monthly markets, you stand on one place, when you see the yellow shirt, you know, that is the one. If you want to try, now try today to move without a phone. People will retrace you by what you left home dressed up with, not so in town because they cannot call you and then you pick the phone. Where you don't have a variety of clothes, they see you from far and will identify you. Now, let me just ask you, suppose Lazarus, who came from the grave, came and sat among the people who were present there. Did you need to ask of the people here who has been dead? But by the type of cross that Lazarus was putting on, you would know him. And you say, this must be the man who has been. Why? Because the clothes that you were putting on were the clothes of the grave. And among the people who were alive, no one was putting on the clothes of the grave. Apart from one man, Lazarus. So you could easily identify him from that cloth. So as it was easy to identify Lazarus as the dead man, the family is also known. Poverty. Not so? That is the cross that they easily identify you with poverty. Not so? Born again, fire spitting. But the cross of the grave are still where on you, poverty. Wherever you go, let me tell you, poverty can smell. The Bible says that even your own relatives will distance themselves from you. 
that even when you try to be so near to your friends, they will always run away from you. Try to make phone calls. People will refuse to pick because they know you will say, I am in town, I am stuck. Can you help me with 1,000? So they will look at your call and... Now, the same phone which you have called and has gone and answered, called two minutes later, it is busy talking to the grave clothes are where on you, dressed. Whatever they do, it amounts to nothing. That is it. That family, they're educated, but you go there. They don't even have a plate, isn't it? Have you ever been to such a home? The best cup they will bring has so many teeth around it. Not so. The grasses, you need to look for where you will drink juice without being cut. And they will say, that is the definition. They will always mount to nothing. Mount to nothing. You know, they are in Kampara, but what, what are they doing in Kampara? Can't they? Mount to nothing. That is the growth of the grave. And this afternoon, this evening, says, the Lord says, untie him. Untie the man from the growth of the grave. In that way, they can never get married. Even if they do what? Not so? The definition. They will never. And then they can add and say, ha, can those ones even ever settle in a marriage? In other words, wherever you go, they chase you. That is the cross. That the enemy... When they meet the man coming to your compound, they say, ha, ah, you have gone there. You think you'll ever get somebody who would stay in you? No peace. No peace. No peace. Whoa, 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 cry. When anybody makes noise on the village, they don't need to ask, who are those that are shouting? They know your father and your mother are fighting. Your brother and your sister are fighting. When there is a function at home, before it ends, it is each other's neck. And the heiresses are tired of what? Of war and conflict. The cross of the grave. It must do what? Untie the man. The family described as the drunkards, you know? Drunkards. You want any drunko? Or wabo gakaba chwere mpeta. In other words, <laughs> that is the cross. Every day you cry to God, God, what did we ever do? Whoever tries to get saved, two days later, he drinks ten times more than today and tie the man. Those people, they are always confusion makers. Put him on any committee, confusion. To put him on the church council, confusion. At the place of work, confusion. Even when we are born again, we must untie the man. Have you ever heard of a woman who says, her, that you find a man doing very well, get married to him, it's as if you are the calamity maker, isn't it? The 
Joseph, wherever he went, there was a blessing. Even in the prison, there was a blessing. The Lord does not call us to be propagators of a curse. He wants us, everywhere we go, there must be a blessing. Your name is a liar. No truth all the time. The mother deceives the son. The son deceives the father. The father deceives the neighbor. You know, when the children are there, you go and tell them that he has gone away. Even the children come and tell you. Daddy has told you that he has gone away. Uh huh. He has told us to come and tell you that he has gone away. Mm. So the man who knows, oh, so he's inside there. So, listen, Psalm 12, verse 1 says, Help the Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Everyone lies to their neighbors. They flatter with their lips, but have a deception in their hearts. Do you know, by the time you open your mouth, to find the people knowing her, you must have told me a lie. You know? Have you ever told your children something and they say, I hope that you are not lying to me? Are you getting me? I liked one statement made by the government when somebody died and then the spokesman said, ah, Don't say that we are the ones who have killed that one. Now, how can you, the government, which is supposed to protect people, put yourself in a pocket of suspects? Are you getting me? Now you tell your children, I'm not lying to you. Uh -huh. Now you as a mother, when you tell your children, I'm not lying, then whom should they trust? Whom? My dear friends, when you have received the salvation, but you are still in the clothes of the grave, they will still know that you are a liar. They give you an opportunity to preach and they know someone that is a lie. Untie the man. Untie the man. So if you may recall, Lazarus never bound himself, but others did. Is it Lazarus who bound himself? No. In most cases, it is not ourselves that bind up ourselves and looking at his body, how it was bound, you would definitely know by no means did he bind himself. Not so? And those who did, they did it so faithfully that the arm of Lazarus cannot easily swing around. Isn't it? That's how some of us have been bound by our enemies. To make sure that nothing good ever comes out of you. I am saying as if I'm looking in a mirror. Somebody looking herself through the mirror. And she says, God, people tell me I am beautiful. People tell me I am wonderful. How come no man sees me? What is this beautiful? That's what I am seeing. And if it is describing you today, whoever bound you, today, Jesus says, and bound her. <laughs> and bound her. Why should people tell you that you are beautiful and you feel so angry? And you are right to be angry. 
What is this beauty that cannot attract a potential husband to make a proposal? And bound the man. Isaiah 49 verse 24 says, Can plunder be taken from the warriors? Or captives be restored from the fears? Who are the warriors? Those witches and sorcerers that have gotten your womb and are watching over it every now and then in the shrine, saying nothing will ever that have looked at your destiny and have tied you on this banana called Echitembe. Is there any person who has ever harvested a banana bunch from the mutumba, from the, from the, from the saka called Echitembe, and you go and eat it? But when you look at it, it flourishes. It flourishes. It is like a flower. And so, constantly watching you, you know, you come towards your death because of age when they are still. The question is, can plunder be taken from warriors? Or captives be restored from the fears? Verse 25. But this is what the Lord says. Yes, Captives will be taken from the warriors and plunder retrieved from the fears. He says, I will contend with those who contend with you. And your children I will save. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will be drunk on their own blood as with wine. Then all mankind will know that I the Lord, I am your Savior and your Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. <laughs> Who is that that has said you amount to nothing? The Lord says, I will make your enemies my enemies. Your adversaries my adversaries until he restores you. We are born again, praise God. You have been saved, praise God. Lazarus was dead, and the Lord said, come out! And Lazarus for sure was alive when he was jumping. Today, the Lord says this, for how long as a believer would you cry? For how long? For how long will you cry? The drunkards go. Every day they come home drunk. A believer, you have no sugar at home. No. No. And no. That title of Mr. Poverty, that cross, the cross of the grave. Tonight, we must undress it. <clears throat> the cross of the grave. God does not save us from the teeth of death so that we remain bound and dressed in those names, in those dresses, in those suits of the grave. No way. He has conquered the grave. He cannot fail to conquer the cross of the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He told me as I was coming up that the greatest work, the Lord has done it. 
The greatest work was to make Lazarus who was dead and smelling to be alive. It is now the small work of untying Lazarus that is left. He has already done the greatest work. He says in the book of Revelation, I was dead. You see, I am alive. And I hold the keys of death in my hands. And Paul says, death, where is your strength? Where is your strength? The Lord who has done all this, will he fail to, to do this? That's what Paul says in Romans chapter 8. The one who has given only his only son to die for us, will he be the one to condemn us? Tonight, we are encountering the Lord. I don't normally like to give testimonies of other people, but let me give somebody's testimony. The other day, I was conducting an overnight at St. Francis Chapel, and the Lord gave a word for people to write down their prayer requests and to pray over them. So recently, he sent me a message and said, of all the things I wrote, I have put tick, 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 and he said, only one, but I'm also still trusting God. And that was getting a job. For him, he believed God for a job of at least 450000 So the other day, he sent me a message and said, even this one has been answered. <laughs> that they have called me for a job where I'm going to be paid 650000 now, if for you are earning $650 per day, that's okay. But for him, he wanted 1000 <laughs> The Lord has already done the greatest to raise Lazarus from the dead. What is left is to get the cross of the dead off. So that when they meet you as a believer, they see a smile on your face. For how long will you cry? For how long will you carry that pain with you on your body? I want to see two people who are saying today, I am leaving this pain here. And one of you, that pain has been on you for five years, five solid years. Where are you? You come. Uh huh. The cross of the grave must be removed Amen. from you. Amen. You say, Jesus, Jesus from, today, from today, no more pain. No more pain. Do you want to go and check yourself? Yes, ma'am. Please do. Check for that pain which has been on you for those five years. Do you want to go and hide somewhere and check? Yes. Please, go out there. Check and come back. I saw another hand somewhere.
the cross of the grave must do what? Must go. Do you want to tell us? Yes. Alcoholism. Mm-hmm. Where the pain? The pain. Uh, the pain of alcoholism. Alcoholism. Yes. Okay. Today, that pain must go. Let us stretch out our hands towards our brother. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, I break addiction in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We declare that from today, the smell of alcohol will make him vomit and that he will never taste alcohol till he comes to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me tell you, the good thing is that there is no alcohol in the church. But there is wine in the church. Not so? We are going to ask them to bring wine and let him smell it. And he is going to tell us the smell and what it felt like. Please get us wine. He's going to smell it here. We are getting into prayer. We are getting into prayer. Lazarus was dead. He was raised from the grave and then remove the cross of the grave. Our sister, we are going to pray, not so? I didn't want us to be tempted to pray one by one, not so? But we are going into prayer. But let us give her a chance. This, the Bible says that since the, John, the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has suffered, and it is the violent that take it by force. And our sister is receiving her miracle. I feel sweat covering me. But you tell us your story. You are going to be okay. Please. It is there. Don't drink it. Just smell. And you will tell us. Me, I'm coming from Fort Potro. That's where I stayed. But now I'm here because I came for treatment. Mm. I normally suffer with the ulcers, especially ulcers. Ulcers, pressure, okay. and diabetes. So, is it the reason why you would feel your body covered by sweat? Yes. Okay. Kare. <laughs> I wish there was a pineapple around. We're going to pray for you and they give you a pineapple and you eat it right here and right now. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we command this dress of infirmity to be off your daughter. Infirmity in terms of ulcers, in terms of diabetes, in terms of pressure. We command it to leave. We dress her in the new garment of goodness, of life in its fullness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, this is what we are going to do. She has been walking always slowly. Not so? Yes. 
When Lazarus came out of the grave, he was rocking like this. After removing the cloth of the grave, how did he walk? Did he continue to walk like this? Now, you were putting on the cloth of the grave, and so you were walking like this. But now, the Bible says, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount on the wings like eagles. They shall walk and never be. They shall run and will not faint. Now, I want that good, energetic woman in you. You are going to walk like this, and you walk around and you come back here. Walk very fast. Now, you didn't know, but every time she would walk very fast, her heart would pant. Yes. <laughs> now, touch, touch your heart. How is it beating? No matter. She has been a hard-working woman, but of late, she, has, she had given herself rest without doing any work. Yes. Of course. Okay. Down. You have been down. Now you are up. Not so? Amen. Now, let me tell you, there is somebody in here, and you are seated around here, and in your heart you said, suppose this woman collapses here. <laughs> what will happen? Do you want to put up your hand because you are seated around here? Do you want to put up your hand? Okay. Great. Now, let me show you that she is not going to collapse. Now, she has run around here. We are going to ask her to run like this and come back outside the church. So, as she comes, let this man tell us, every single time this man would even just, I uh, know you go like this. Go back and you come through here. Every time this man would smell alcohol, he would start salivating. Am I lying? No, you're not lying. Now, you have smelled alcohol. Can you please tell us? Wine. <laughs> uh. You want to smell again? Uh, not really. <laughs> Okay, you tell us so that this man may know that you are not about to collapse. <laughs> this man is my husband. Wonderful. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She has been failing to move from the bedroom, I mean sitting room, properly to go for bathing. She has a pacemaker, she had a heart, she has a, a, a heart surgery. And she has been depreciating, failing even to eat. We are in Fort Porto. God blessed us with a daughter and we are staying with her and she would not even move to the gate. That's when you said that somebody, 
Yes, from Sing Circle C. And I also have a prayer request when, if time comes and you allow me, it is a, one that has a testimony, but it is a prayer request also. Now, please, uh, you stay here. You stay here. This man is my husband. I didn't know anything. Not so? And the person who was saying, suppose she collapses and dies, was seated there and now has she collapsed <laughs> has she died Jesus did what was great to say Lazarus come out the dress of the grave has been removed from your wife. That is the Jesus that we serve. Please, take your wife and don't walk as six people. Walk majestically. Okay. After smelling, tell us. I didn't even feel that smell. Like, um, it wasn't irritating, but I didn't feel that smell. Okay. Now, let me show you another miracle that the Lord is doing. This man, it had been almost difficult for him to start writing and signing well, right? Yeah, it's true. Hold that pen. Let them give you a paper and see what the Lord has done for you. Somebody who was always recognized in class as someone with the best handwriting. Not so? Yeah, it's true. I never went to school with you. Praise God. Uh, I worked with Steve. We were in Changwari working in a refugee camp. But there is a time when I, I used to sit, he used to sit next to me. He could come and be like, you know what, Robert, you sign for me. He couldn't even sign. So when he said that, I said, no, let me go. I could sign for him even sometimes he tells you, you write for me. And what he said, it is very true. We were supposed to go with him to Chiriandongo, but because of alcohol and what, they said, ah, ah, for you, Steve, we are suspending. We are okay. Your contract is terminated because of our account. You bring us where he wrote. Bring us where he wrote. And let this man see where somebody he was signing for, how he has written. <laughs> God is great. God is great. God is great. The cross of the grave has been removed. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Come and change my destiny, my destiny today. Come and change my destiny, 
my destiny. To His name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. God. Your name is Yahweh. 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 Now, I want to ask each one of us, please stand. Today, you are meeting your God personally. And as you stand, he's going to give us what he needs us to pray for. And as a church, we shall pray for him. Praise God, church. Hey, I'm thinking of the song to give us to usher it into prayer. I have two concerns. One is uh, my mother who is up country in the village, exactly she has the condition like uh, the mom we have prayed for. She's diabetic, she has ulcers, she has uh, pressure. Exactly the way that mom is, is exactly the way she is. Then for my case... The way she was. The way she, sorry. Mm. The way she has been is the way my mom is. Then for my case, I have been believing God for promotion. I have been pushing, pushing, pushing. It has been sagging. Okay. I request God to intervene. Now, it is not only promotion, but his work has also been threatened, right? True. True. Today, Church, will you stretch out your hands towards him? Lord God, our heavenly Father, you restored this man in a family which is supposed to be well off, in a family where they are looking at him as the greatest bread, bread earner, as a family, as, as a person on whom the family clings. And yet the enemy has been fighting him, knowing that the candle will be blown by attacking his income, attacking his stability at the place of work. Lord God, today we put an end in the name of Jesus. We undress him from that dress of retrogression, of stagnation, of frustration, we remove it from him in the name of Jesus. And we pray that today you shall make him stand firm like Mount Zion that will never be shaken. From glory to glory will he climb and all the honor will come back to you. Lord, we pray for the mother. May you stretch your hand, Lord, towards her. Heal her. Strengthen her. May she live to say her great and great grandchildren to the honor and glory and the praise of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to sing together that song. The Bible says that the Lord inhabits in the praises of his people. And as we sing, the glory of God descends to his people. And he meets you at your point of need. Mama, you are welcome. You come and the church will stretch out our hands towards you. And you will be as young as a baby girl. Amen. 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 Give us the song, please. Hey, there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
power, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Raise your voice and let's declare There is power, there is power In the name of Jesus There is power, there is power In the name of Jesus To break every chain, to break every chain To break every chain, to break every chain In the name of Jesus To break every chain Yes, break, break every chain. To break, break every chain. chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Those chains break are being every represented every by the cross of the grave. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yes. Oh, break every chain. There's a power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, sing it out. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Break every chain, oh God, to break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain, there's an army, there's an army rising up. There's an army, there's an army, there's an army rising up. An army. There's an army rising up, there's an army rising up. To break every chain, to break every chain. Now come on, sing it as you believe it. Oh, I hear the chains falling. Those cross of the grave, they are breaking. They are falling off your life. Those cross of the grave, they are dropping off your life. They are dropping off your life. They are falling of your life. Sickness they are falling of your destiny. They are falling of your family. They are falling of your character. They are falling of your character. They are falling off. They are falling off. They are falling off. They are falling off. Yes, Lord. 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 The poverty must fall off. The must fall off. Retrogression must fall off. Yes. Yes. I hear the chains falling. They must fall off, they must fall off, they must fall off. They must fall off, they must fall off. Chains falling. Infirmity, you must fall off, you must fall off. I hear them falling. I hear the chains falling. There is power, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, there is power. To break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Praise the Lord.
there is a power in the name of Jesus to have those clothes of the grave to fall off your life, to fall off your family, to fall off, to fall off, to fall off, to fall off. You are going to stretch out your hands as we pray for and with our sister. In less than a minute, she's going to tell you what the church needs to stand with her for. And a miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. Very briefly. Praise God. I have a problem with my eyes I can't see. One can only see some light somewhere. I got a retina detachment. And as I was in Mengo and they were going to operate me, I ended up having conversions and I never had the surgery. Okay. And then the other one, the right, the left one, which is remaining, also has a cataract. And the problem is with my neck where they say the bones are weak and they are pressing on the nerves and the nerves irritated the brain and the brain reacted and that's when I had those conversions. Okay. So I can't have that. Then I've had... So, do you want God to do it now? I don't want surgery. Okay. I don't want surgery. God is going to do it for me. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Church, will you stretch out your hand? And we pray for our sister. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you are a mighty healer. You are a mighty healer. Touch this snake, Lord. Let every bone be strong. Let it be back to its own place in the name of Jesus. And let the irritation of the nerves cease. And Lord God, our Heavenly Father, as the church prays, we pray that the sight is restored. We pray, Lord, that the sight is restored. Lord, let the sight be restored. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're a miracle worker. You're mighty in the power. Let everything, Lord, be back to normal. We are going to ask her to sit there and begin to do what was not possible with her eye. We are going to begin now. There is a power in the name of Jesus. You are going to remove those clothes of the what? Of the grave. And the Lord is doing it here. He is doing it here. You are doing it not only for yourself, but also for your family. If they have said that your family will amount to nothing, today we are saying Lazarus is out of the grave and Lazarus must be free. No more that name. No more that name. No more that name. No more shall you be identified with the clause of the grave. No more. Just open your mouth and begin to pray. 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 Be violent in the spirit. 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 Devil, we are saying enough is enough. You will not hold us anymore in the grave. For the Lord Jesus Christ has done it. He has told us to come out of the grave. And today we must declare our freedom. We declare our freedom. We declare our freedom in the name of Jesus. We refuse sickness. We refuse infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ.
Yes, address. Address, address, address it now. Jesus said, untie this man. Untie him from the cross of the, of the grave. In Jesus' name. Amen. Attack every infirmity. Attack every sickness. Attack it right now in the name of Jesus. And you say, you sickness, mention it by name. Mention it by name. And you say, I pull you off my life. I get you off my life. I get you off my loved ones. In Jesus' name. Be violent against it. And you see it happen. You will see it happen in Jesus' name. Yes. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we declare and decree that every kind of definition that the devil had given us, today we say no more. No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, whichever definition that the enemy had given you, there is no more. I will no longer be defined by that. I will no longer be defined as a poor person. My family will no longer be defined in that way. We shall no longer be defined as people who cannot have, who cannot progress, who cannot see our destiny. Refuse tears. Refuse tears. For how long will you cry? Today we are saying no more crying. No more crying. No more crying. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, every form of bondage, we refuse you in Jesus' name. We refuse every form of bondage. Yes, attack every bondage, attack every bondage. The Bible says that, behold, I have put my word into your mouth. Use that word. Use that word. Use that word. Use that word which the Lord has put in your mouth. And attack the devil. Attack the devil's camp. Attack the devil's camp. Attack the devil's camp. Attack the devil's camp. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, for every shrine that has been standing against the children of God, we are setting you on fire. We are setting you on fire. We are setting you on fire. In the name of Jesus, let fire come from heaven and destroy every shrine, and destroy every shrine, and destroy every witchcraft, and destroy every sorcery activity that has been standing against the children of God. Fire, 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 in Jesus' name. Let fire come from heaven and destroy them. In the name of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, God gives me a vision of where the blessing comes into your hand and the enemy plucks it off your hands. Today, we are taking possession of what belongs to us. He says in the book of Isaiah that I am going ahead of you to break the gates of bronze and iron so that you may take your possession which is hidden in the darkness. 
that belongs to you. Amen. Your education must mount to something. Amen. Your children must be great. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your great grandchildren must be great. Amen. For the word of God says that the children of the wicked are cast to the third and the fourth generation. But those who bless my name, who are holy, who are living according to my statutes, their children shall be blessed to a thousand generation. Amen. Tonight we are starting a generation of blessings. In Jesus' name. Will you stretch out your hands to the Lord? And you say, dear Lord, every blessing that you have given me, your word tells me that every good and perfect blessing comes from the Lord and it adds no sorrow. But the enemy has been snatching my blessings, blessings to my children and the children of my children. Today, I attack you, enemy. Satan, from today, I tell you, no more snatching my blessings in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I break every bronze gate. I break every bronze gate. I break every bronze gate in the name of Jesus and every bars of iron I tear you down in the name of Jesus and I take possession of my blessings in Jesus' name. I snatch them from you. I wash them in the blood of Jesus and I declare from today I am blessed because of my blessings are back to me in Jesus' name. I declare that I am blessed. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the afternoon. I am blessed in the evening. I am blessed when I go to bed. I am blessed when I wake up. My children are blessed because I am blessed. My great-grandchildren are blessed because I am blessed. From today, I declare I will never be stagnant. My children will never be stagnant. My children of my children will never be stagnant. I am progressing. I am progressing. I am progressing. In Jesus' name, I am progressing. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I am great. My children are great. The children of my children are great. In Jesus' name, I declare no more stagnation. In the name of Jesus, I declare no more retrogression. In Jesus' name, I declare that I am on my way to my destiny. In the name of Jesus. There's someone who was just watching and wondering, what are these people doing? Let me tell you. Confession is possession. Number two. The Bible says that because they have said these things to you, now I am turning my word in you into a fire and them into wood to be consumed by that fire. Because they said you will never see progress. You will never see light. You will never marry. You will never have children. You'll... God has turned the word into your mouth into fire. So when you say, I will be great, it is written in the spirit that you will be great. 
Now, let me show you that we are not joking. When we were praying, somebody here, your focus was about the pain that comes to you here, like a sharp spear. That is what for you, you were praying about. And you are seated, you are standing around here. Where are you? Yes, you are there. Come. As the rest of the church was saying, I'll be great, my children will be great, for her she was saying, God, this pain must go. Is that right? Yes. Now, to show that the Lord has heard, she would hardly breathe in and hold the breath within her. Right? Yes. Now, you are going to breathe in and as she breathes in, do you remember that game? Uh -uh. There's, an, there's something which I want to do. This is what we would do. Is there a way we can pluck this one off or it will remain? This is what we would do. As you breathe in, you say. Do you remember that game? That's what she's going to do. Take in your deep breath and then hold it there as. Okay. Okay. Hold it there. First take it in. Take it in. Have you taken it in? Hold it there and then begin to move. To move your hands. You see the distance she has moved? Now, there was always a lot of pain. Now, let her tell you. Last week, I went to Chirudu. I had to go for a CT scan. When I went there, it was, it was horrible. However, I was cancelled, but when I went in the room, uh, I was cancelled, then the doctor told me, go in the machine. I don't know whether most of you have, I don't know whether some of you have been for a TC scan for the, ch for the chest. So when I went there, uh, they, of course they cancelled me and told me you sleep. The machine, the machine comes like this with all the rays and I told the, the doctor that, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to handle this, this, this test. I said, no, you relax, Doreen, relax. When the doctor went out, the truth is I went out of the machine. I ran away. So I told him, you know what? Let me go and pray. All will be well. He said, no. Most people run away, especially the young ones and the elder. They run away. So yesterday, they called me. They told me, when are you returning? I told them, I'll come back on Friday. When I'm ready. Okay. Now, after breathing no, it's not in done. and holding your breath, how did you find the pain in here, in your chest? No, I'm now feeling okay because I would sleep, then I feel the pain this side, I feel the pain, and now I feel very pain. Okay. Now, let me tell you, let me say it again. I wish I was guessing, but there's no guesswork here. When you said you would be great, 
indeed you will be great. When you said, my children will be great. There's a certain woman here. Your children have been performing poorly in class. You are around here. And it has been bothering you. Don't fear saying that I am the one, but you are around here. Where are you? Yes. It has been bothering you, not so. When we said, you come. When we said, your children shall be great. Immediately in her mind, the grades of her children came, right? No. No. Then there must be somebody else. Because the, then there must be someone else. Are you still there? Still around here. There is no guesswork. Uh -huh. Don't go. <laughs> okay. Now, right. When we said your children shall be great, did that thought of the max come fresh? And I even touched her and prayed for her. I came with her. But even in that prayer, she remembered the many times she has prayed for the good grades which have not come. Right? Yes, she's, she's not focusing. She's still young, but not focusing. Yes. Now, let me tell you. You still confessed and said, my children shall be great. And you are going to see. Amen. So, your children shall be great. You shall be great. You say, you say with me that I shall be great. I shall be great. You say, my children shall be great. My children shall be great. And my grandchildren shall be great. My grandchildren shall be great. Amen. There is no guesswork. You are well. Let me tell you, some of us here, I was seeing you working while destroying. You work instead of constructing, you are destroying. And there are about two men around there. And your biggest problem has been, but I work and work and work. Instead of progressing, I see losses, losses. There are two men around there. When the Bible, when God begins to reconstruct you, okay, and you were there, okay, let me tell you, when you prayed over there, one thing that has always bothered you was, who bewitched me? Uh, true. And when you prayed over there, while others were focusing on the confession, you was, was saying, God, deliver me from this witchcraft. Right? That's true. And he did. He did. I want to invite you to this God. you are going to see progress. Tangible progress. So, the Lord your God, 
the Lord your God. Amen. You have encountered him today. Amen. I just want to ask you to do this one thing. Just put three, three prayer items. Just three. Just focus on those three. And close your eyes. And pray to God about those three. Just those three. Would you say with me, Jesus, your word tells me that when I ask for anything in your name, I should believe that I have got it and it shall be mine. Today I declare that these three things, mention them. They are mine. They are mine. They are mine. In Jesus' name. Have you prayed for the salvation of your children? Let me tell you. Because I am seeing the dots of people praying for the salvation of their children. Let me tell you, I see your sons and daughters coming to the full knowledge of God. Yeah. Whichever prayer that you have offered to the Lord, Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you because today the cloth of the grave have been removed from our lives. We thank you, Lord. We want to invite our sister whom we prayed for. Yes. Do you know how a bulldozer moves? It is very difficult for the bulldozer to turn to the right or to the left. Not so. Now, no more moving like a bulldozer. Not so. Will you turn your neck to the right? and to the left. Now, whenever she would turn her neck, she would always hear the bones as if they are cracking in the neck, right? Yes. Now, turn it again. Let her tell us if that cracking is there. The cracking is not there. The, I was feeling even turning my neck. Yeah. Even as I sleep, I try to sleep, you know, to put my head down carefully. Turning, I turn like a bulldozer indeed. <laughs> now, she has turned... Okay. Now, whenever she would try to see with the eye that was left, everything would be there but blurred. 
Now we are going to ask her to remove her specs and try to see with that eye that has been a little bit fair and let her tell us what she's able to see. Somewhere. <laughs> you recognize some people. Hmm. Pardon? Yes. I've been able to see properly, and I'm wondering, it was not very clear. I was even trying to check on this young man, and I couldn't tell whether he was the one, even with my glasses. Yes. <laughs> Now, let me tell you, when I asked her, even when she was coming, one thing that had filled her mind was old age, right? Yes, yes. I was saying, okay. I'm okay like another old woman. Okay. Now, let me tell you, one of the things that has been working against her has been the science that she knows. Yes. <laughs> now, your God goes beyond science. Yes. He goes beyond science. So, can I show you something? You are going to look this side and try to describe the kind of colors that you see people putting on. I can see all of them. Red, yellow, orange, blue, green, a mixture of um, maroon and white. Now, some of you might think that that's how she was, but everything was looking before as if it is a block, a block, a block, right? Yes. Now, I want to invite you to that God. I want to invite you to encounter with that God. From tonight, when you kneel down to pray, remember that God. And when you pray for something, believe that you have got it and it shall be yours. God bless you.